Hello, everyone. I'm back to answer some more questions. So let's get this thing started. Um, I'm going to start with this question. Um, <clears throat> I was just wondering how many hours of exercise would be a good idea if I wanted to say lose, say, two pounds a week. I'm going to be truthful with you. With your lifestyle change and with your diet change, if you're changing to the correct caloric uh, intake and you've caused a deficit in your um, caloric intake every day, and if you exercise for as long as you possibly can, now I'm going to say, y'all might think I'm a mad woman, but at one point I was doing two hours a day for like six days a week. I was pushing it. And that was like an hour and 15 minutes of straight up cardio. And then maybe 45 minutes of lifting. Now, I didn't lift every day. But I lifted maybe three days a week. And on those, on those days that I didn't lift, it wasn't exactly two hours. It might have been an hour and a half. But I was losing about two to three pounds a week of healthy weight loss. And I say, if you want to do it, kick it in the butt that way. Um, if you're a beginner... Start off with 30 minutes of exercise. See how you fare in that. See how you're doing with that. And if you can't even get through, let's say, 45 minutes, sneak your exercise in in other ways. Do 30 minutes somewhere and then maybe sneak in 15 minutes later on in the day. You'll eventually get better at what you're doing cardiovascularly. Your body will grow and you'll desire to do more. So push it that way. Don't try to kill yourself the first time because if you kill yourself the first time, you're less likely to work out later. But if you do it that way, I guarantee you, you'll see some of the results that you desire. So I hope that helps you out. The next question I have um, is how do you stay on track when you're going through a hard situation in life? When I'm going through a hard situation in life, God has definitely blessed me to not be an emotional eater. But for those that are, I will say this. Start to just write out your goals again. Make it known to yourself mentally what you're there to do, what you're trying to accomplish. No matter what's going on in life, know that at the end of that situation, you still only have you. I mean, not that you only have you, but you know you have yourself after that. And you want to be happy after you accomplish or get over whatever it is that's hard in your life. I'm telling you, exercise has been therapeutic for me. Being able to work out allows you to release stress. And if you, if you uh, look at research, research even says those who work out are less stressed because you can take it out on the workout. You know what I'm saying? Uh, be happy. Make, make yourself happy about exercising and the changes that you've made, even if you're going in through a time of turmoil, even if something is going on. Know that that exercise can be a therapeutic technique for you. It can be something that you can rely on to try and brighten your day to make you a little bit happier and i hope that helps you uh with that question because that is an excellent question someone asked can you answer if the skin around your breast conformed to the weight loss of your breast easily or did you have to moisturize to keep the skin together or rather did you have to especially moisturize more than you already had um, I'm going to tell you all, I'm a moisturizing queen. Even when I was a larger lady, I was a moisturizing queen. My mother has always sworn by healthy skin. Ever since I was a younger girl, um, she always kind of taught me about the ways to keep healthier skin. And my mother is an older woman. I'm not going to reveal her age, but my mother looks very young. Nobody is ever able to, um, guess her age. But my mother always taught me this technique. And I hope she don't mind me sharing this. Um, rub upwards. Rub upwards all over your body. When you put on lotion, rub upwards. Rub the face upwards. When you think, think about it. Gravity pulls things down. That's why we get things like crow's feet. That's why our skin gets loose on our bodies. But if you have a force working against it and not with it, then it's only going to increase the elasticity of the skin. It's going to help lift the skin so when you rub on something i mean the whole time i was losing weight i really didn't notice that i needed to moisturize more but i just kept my same moisturization techniques try that out try rubbing upwards and see if that helps the skin stay tighter because i didn't have any of those really loose issues as i stated before i have a little extra skin left on the bottom of my stomach but you really can't see that and i call that my war wounds i'm happy to look at that and see what i've come through so you might want a little bit of a war room but if you don't want them everywhere rub upwards try that out someone asked was there anything that you could not do aerobically or cardiovascularly that you find easy now i can't run for the life of me no matter how hard i try not that i try very often um 
I couldn't run for the life of me either. I couldn't even run a half a mile. I used to laugh at myself on the treadmill or running because I'm like, oh my goodness, like I cannot run. But what you have to realize is day by day, it's a day by day journey. That's why I tell y'all that all the time, the word journey. Every day you're going to surprise and excite yourself. Every day. If you stick with it, I promise you, a, a half a mile will become a whole mile. A whole mile will become two miles. Two miles will become three miles. And, and I'm proud to say today that I can run four or five miles without stopping now. And I run our lake, which is a little bit over three miles without stopping. The first time I ran that mile, I cried. Because that represents represented me overcoming an obstacle and being in shape. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was in shape. I was happy about that. And right now, I'm actually training for, I'm going to start myself training for a 26-mile uh, marathon. And no, I'm probably not going to run the whole thing. But me getting through even the first seven miles, just running at a steady pace will be happy for, will make me very happy. And of course, with some rest in between, I plan to run as much of those 26 miles as I possibly can. So it's a day by day thing. You will find that you can do so much more as much. If you push harder during each workout, you can't go anywhere but up, nowhere but up. So keep that in mind. Um, what are your no-no foods? I'm going to tell y'all the truth. I really don't have any no-no foods. Now, there are foods such as fried foods that no longer agree with my body. So, I'm so happy about that because a chick used to love some fried food. But um, I'm really at the point now with my body that it has learned so much that I can eat something and know it ain't right for me. So, I might have a piece of chocolate cake. I don't really like chocolate. Let me not use that. Cheesecake. I love cheesecake. Unless my mama makes my cheesecake because she knows how to make it light and less fattening, then if it's a real piece of cheesecake and it's that thick turtle cheesecake or something like that, I can eat two pieces of that and be like, I'm done. I'm so done. Your body learns to tell you what's not going to go into it and what's not going to happen. If you keep and stay with your lifestyle change... Anything you stick with is going to become habitual. Anything you stick with, your body is going to adjust to. So if you have gone years without eating fried food and you've kept that together, you can have a few McDonald's fries and be like, okay, I'm done, and push the box away. So I don't have no-no foods per se, but there are foods such as fried foods or lots of heavy ice cream that I stay away from because it doesn't agree with my body any longer. So keep that in mind. Did you ever fall off? And if so, how did you get back on it for good? I keep on starting over. Well, we all fall down, but we get up. Yes, you're going to you're gonna have some hard days. I, it's going to be some days where you'll be like, man, I just let that go. It might even be a whole week where you're like, oh, man. I remember when I first really started working out, um, some days I just got so excited. Some weeks I would just work out for seven days in a week seven days in a row and then I would take off like two days and I would feel guilty about taking off two days and I counted that as a failure the higher you build yourself up the more you'll learn to feel guilty about it now that sounds bad but research shows that after 17 consecutive workouts over days exercise becomes habitual so remember on that 18th day if you wake up and don't work out you're gonna feel guilty and you're gonna want to answer to yourself so yeah I've fallen off but what you do is you revamp your mind, you write out what your goals are, and you talk to yourself, what am I doing? What am I trying to accomplish? This is what I'm trying to do. You have to excite yourself. Don't look to anybody else to excite you. Excite yourself about this, and I guarantee you, you'll get back on track. 